surprising facts you might not know about vaccines. Before we get to the 10 surprising facts you might not know about vaccines, let's talk about the brief history of vaccines. Vaccines are biological preparations that provide immunity to a particular infectious disease. It is usually given by injection. However, some research in animals suggests oral immunizations could become an alternative delivery method in the future. Vaccines typically contain an agent that resembles the disease-causing microorganism. It is often made from a weakened or killed forms of the microbe, its toxins, or one of its surface proteins. Vaccines stimulate the body's immune system to recognize the microorganisms as a threat then destroyed. Now that we have a general understanding of what a vaccine is, let's talk about the history of vaccines. According to the Historical Medical Library of the College of Physicians of Philadelphia, during the 15th century, the Chinese recognized that people who had contracted smallpox was immune to reinfection. Before the introduction of vaccinations, smallpox could be prevented by a deliberate inoculation of the smallpox virus, later referred to as virulation. The earliest hints of the practice of inoculation for smallpox in China comes during the 10th century. Now, the oldest documented use of virulation dates to the 15th century. The Chinese implemented a method of nasal insufflation administered by blowing powdered smallpox material, usually scabs, up the nostrils. Edward Jenner, an English physician and scientist, innovations begun with his successful 1796 use of cowpox material to create immunity to smallpox. This is the world's first vaccine. Edward Jenner's method underwent medical and technological changes over the next 200 years and eventually resulted in the eradication of smallpox. Jenner is often called the father of immunology and his work is said to have saved more lives than the work of any human. Louis Pasteur was the next to make an impact on human disease. Pasteur was a French biologist and chemist renowned for his discoveries of the principles of vaccination, microbial fermentation, and pasteurization. He is best known to the public for his 1885 rabies vaccine and inventing the technique of treating milk and wine to stop bacterial contamination, a process we now call pasteurization. Pasteur is regarded as one of the three main founders of bacteriology. Together with Ferdinand Cohen and Robert Koch, and is popularly known as the father of microbiology. Herd or community immunity is a form of indirect protection from infectious diseases that occur when a sufficient percentage of the population has become immune to an infection, whether through a vaccination or previous infections. If enough people are resistant to the cause of a disease, such as a virus or bacteria, it has nowhere to go thereby reducing the likelihood of an infection for individuals who lack immunity. Once the community immunity threshold has been reached, diseases gradually disappear from the population. Now that you have a general understanding of what a vaccine is and the history of a vaccine, let's discuss some surprising facts you might know or not know about vaccines. Universal flu vaccine. Researchers at the NIH Institute of Health began clinical trials on a universal flu vaccine called M-001 last year. The first in-human clinical trial of the universal vaccine that NIH hope will teach the body's immune system to fight multiple types of flu or those that might cause a pandemic. The so-called universal influenza vaccine will be able to provide long-lasting protection for all age groups. They're grown in chicken egg cells. There are currently three types of influenza vaccines available, recombinant, cell-based, and egg-based. They all start with the same viruses from the WHO, or World Health Organization. Pharmaceutical companies receive about a vial's worth of viruses from WHO. The firms need to replicate the virus to create enough for millions of flu vaccines. Growing influenza viruses in eggs is the oldest way of making flu vaccines. Scientists inject the live virus into an embryonic egg, let the virus replicate, collect the replicates, purify them, and then kill them. They use those inactivated viruses to make the flu vaccine. According to the Center for Disease Control, 
There are 26 vaccines used in the United States, including vaccines for seasonal influenza or flu. Here in the United States, we are so used to vaccines preventing the majority of deadly diseases, we do not always consider how many lives they save every year. According to the World Health Organization, measles vaccinations alone saved more than 17 million lives between 2000 and 2015. Although vaccines are not 100% guaranteed you won't contract the disease, they're the most important step in preventing and hopefully eradicating some of the worst diseases on the planet. Who actively monitors vaccines when issues arise? The CDC and the FDA maintain a Vaccine Adverse Eventing Reporting System, VARS, which acts as an early warning system in case problems arise. When doctors and nurses give vaccines, they are required to record the lot, the kind of vaccine, and where it was given, so if there are any clusters of reactions, those could be looked at. There are also large systems of HMOs, health maintenance organizations, that look for reactions after vaccines. Immunization can begin in the womb. According to the Mayo Clinic, physicians typically recommend pregnant women receive both flu and Tdap vaccines. This protects the mother and will also give the baby protection until it's old enough to receive its own immunizations. This is especially important since both the flu and a whooping cough are dangerous for infants. Vaccines cannot give you the disease they're preventing. Vaccines involve injecting a dead or weakened virus or bacteria to your immune system. However, this does not mean you're likely to get sick. According to the CDC, it is not possible to contract the disease from dead bacteria or virus or a weakened live specimen. Sometimes kids seem to develop a very mild case of a disease after vaccination. However, Experts promise this does not cause harm. In fact, they can actually signal that a vaccine is doing what it's supposed to be doing, preventing disease. The flu shot isn't a sure bet. It's possible, though less likely, to still contract the flu despite getting the vaccine. Sometimes the actual bugs circulating are different from the ones scientists predicted and that are included in the annual vaccines. Other times, a person's immune system simply did not respond to the vaccine as well as it should. Several factors can affect the immune response to the annual shot, including genetic makeup, any pre-existing immunity, also underlying health conditions. The number of polio cases have dropped from 350,000 a year to just 33 cases in 2019. In 1988, there were 350,000 cases of polio a year. Since then, over 2.5 billion children have been vaccinated against the disease. Only 33 cases in three countries last year, Pakistan, Nigeria, and Afghanistan. Thanks to a polio virus vaccine delivered through widespread immunization campaigns and collaborative efforts, polio has almost been completely eradicated. Six countries accounted for half of the world's unimmunized children. The six countries are Nigeria, 18%, India, 15%, Pakistan, 7%, Indonesia, 5%, Ethiopia, 4%, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, 3%. Yellow fever in Africa by 2026. A billion people will be vaccinated against yellow fever in Africa by 2026, almost half of them children under 15 years of age. Since 2001, the production of the yellow fever vaccine has quadrupled from 20 million to 80 million doses annually. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the Matter of Facts channel. Like and click on the bell for notification of future videos. 